Good morning and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation. I'm Sharon Rulier coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel at St. Michael's Cathedral in Springfield on this first Sunday of 2024. This morning we celebrate the Epiphany of the Lord or Three Kings Day. When Isaiah wrote the poem that we hear today, the Israelites had just returned from decades of exile in Babylon. Judah was devastated, but Isaiah saw it through eyes of faith. The three magi must have seen with eyes of faith as well in order to make the journey to present at newborn in a feeding trough with expensive gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. As members of the body of Christ, let's listen to God's word with ears of faith, recognizing ourselves and those who come to praise and worship the Lord. Our celebrant today is Father Ryan Rooney, pastor of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Parish here in Springfield. Joining Father Ryan on the altar is Deacon Pedro Rivera Moran, the director of Latino ministry for the Diocese of Springfield. Deacon Pedro has gathered members of the Latino Catholic community from all over the diocese to join us in St. Michael's Cathedral. The celebration of Three Kings Day is a very special feast for their community, and we are so honored to have them mark this occasion with us here on Chalice. Gloria Diaz and members of the San Miguel Archangel Group from St. Jerome Parish in Holyoke will provide our music ministry. And as we do each week, we send our best wishes to all celebrating birthdays and anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. A very happy birthday to loyal Chalice viewer, Bill Benoni, a member of Holy Family Parish in South Deerfield who is celebrating his 93rd birthday. Bill is a faithful viewer of our program. We also send our congratulations out to Anna Giza, founding co-host of Real to Real, who has also been a longtime employee at our broadcast partner, WWLP Channel 22. Anna officially retired from her broadcast duties this past week. Bishop Byrne stopped by to wish her well, and all of us here at Catholic Communications join in wishing her and her husband, Ed, a very happy retirement. Anna tells us that she will continue in her role as Director of Music Ministry at St. Michael's in East Long Meadow. Our best to you, Anna. And as always, we are also thinking of all those who are ill or homebound, especially viewers who are watching this from their hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. We pray for you and all who care for your needs. And we will have the names that you, our viewers, have sent in to us for today's Book of Remembrance. Included today is Sister of St. Joseph Mary Lou Brennan, who passed away on January 1st. Sister Mary Lou was a native of Worcester and entered the order in 1956. She was a longtime educator teaching at Blessed Sacrament in Holyoke, Holy Cross in Springfield, and was at St. Thomas the Apostle in West Springfield for 20 years. Sister Mary Lou was also the religious education teacher at Jericho in Holyoke, where she earned a humanitarian award for her work with children and adults there. Sister Mary Lou will be laid to rest on Tuesday. May these souls and the souls of all our faithful departed rest in the peace of Christ. We now join our music ministers for our opening hymn as we greet our celebrant, Father Ryan Rooney, and together celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, Three Kings Day.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Feliz Navidad y prospero año nuevo a todos. Feliz Navidad. That's Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to, to everyone. We're still in the Christmas season, capping it off with the great celebration of Epiphany or the Feast of the Three Kings, Los Tres Reyes Magos. To prepare ourselves for this most sacred liturgy, let us call to mind our sins, so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the splendor of love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to give us our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star. Grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, 
and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant as what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on the earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on the earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, Lord. every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall give offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Sheba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, Lord every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, Lord every nation on earth will adore you. De la carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Efesios. Hermanos, ¿Han oído hablar de la distribución de la gracia de Dios que se me ha confiado en favor de ustedes? Por revelación se me dio a conocer este misterio, que no había sido manifestado a los hombres en otros tiempos, pero que ha sido revelado ahora por el Espíritu a sus santos apóstoles y profetas. Es decir, que por el Evangelio también los paganos son coherederos de la misma herencia, miembros del mismo cuerpo y partícipes de la misma promesa en Jesucristo. Palabra de Dios. We saw a star at its rising and have come to do him homage. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi came from the east, arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its raising, and have come to give him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, 
and all Jerusalem with him, assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people. He inquired of them where Christ was to be born. And they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, since from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi's secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, they prostrated themselves and did him homage, and they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. the weather reports uh, we never know how much snow we're gonna get but hopefully it's a white Christmas and it's still Christmas as I said at the beginning of Mass uh, and uh, today we celebrate little Christmas in celebrating Epiphany we complete our celebration of the Christmas season focusing on the arrival of the Magi who followed the miraculous star to Bethlehem where they encountered the Christ child with Mary, his mother, and departed by another way. There's so much to unpack in that statement. What is epiphany? It means far more than a light bulb going off on our heads. It means manifestation. What is being made manifest? Besides the phenomenon of a miraculous star that guides the Magi to Jerusalem and then to Bethlehem, St. Paul tells us that it is the revelation of a mystery. He says that, it is the gen he says that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The Magi, being kings from the east, are Gentiles, who fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah, representing other nations, bringing their caravans of camels and gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They come to recognize a newborn king of the Jews, and so they go to the city of the king, Jerusalem, and instead encounter the wicked king, Herod. Herod, knowing he is an illegitimate king, immediately summons the chief priests and the scribes, knowing that the one threat to his power might be the Messiah or Christ. The Magi continue on their journey, guided by the star to Bethlehem, where they encounter this very Christ, the hope of humanity, the King of Kings, the Messiah. They give him gifts of gold, representing his kingship, frankincense, representing his divinity, and myrrh, representing his humanity and eventual death. And being warned in a dream, they depart by another way. This way has several meanings. It means they don't return to Herod. It means they have been changed by their encounter with Jesus. But it also means this change has incorporated them into the very life of Jesus. In the early Christian church, the church was referred to simply as the way. Rep repeating Jesus' own words, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. Just as the word exodus in the Old Testament meant a way out, so Jesus becomes the new way out, saving us from the corruption of our sins. And he will do this by his eventual death on the cross, where he will be mocked as king of the Jews and he will be anointed with myrrh oil for his burial. But that won't be the end of the story. Jesus, being God, will rise from the dead and after ascending to the Father, will send his spirit upon the apostles to send them out to every nation on earth. St. Paul will be sent exclusively to the Gentiles to proclaim a sort of radical inclusion. All are called to be part of the body of Christ. Adeste Fidelis, O come, let us adore him. These words of the traditional Christmas song invite us to a life-changing experience in adoration of the Christ child, just like the Magi or three kings had on that first epiphany. In the Catholic Church, we are from every nation on earth, and we come with our many gifts to do some fitting homage to Christ. Here at this Mass, we highlight the inclusion of our Latino community that celebrates Epiphany with gift exchanges, festive Three Kings parties with Rosca de Reyes, or King Cake, and elaborate costumes for the Three Kings. We also recognize with great joy that our church is becoming increasingly more Latino or Hispanic. In the coming years, we, and I say we because I'm half Puerto Rican, we will be approaching 40, 50 percent of the church in the United States. This is significant to point out because there is still much more to be done to include our beautiful community in the majority of parish life. But as we are all called to this table, we all recognize that we must change our lives. It's at Mass and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament that we participate in the same homage of the Three Kings. We become other Magi. Now, there are some dressed up as the Three Kings here for this Mass, but let us consider that each one of us is one of them as we prepare the altar for the Eucharist today. There is, uh, in this day, modern-day Herods, that seek to prop themselves up over Christ and destroy his kingdom. There is the war in the Holy Land right now and canceled celebrations in Bethlehem. There are increased attacks on Christians. There is an increase in every kind of evil that we can think of. But there are also faithful Christians that have such an encounter with Christ in the Eucharist that they are willing to die for his sake in proclaiming him as the way, the truth, and the life. As we are being called to a Eucharistic revival, we should remember that we are not called to a spectator sport or a merely passive reality. Mass and adoration should change us. And if it isn't changing us, maybe we're not making the true gift of ourselves to Jesus. Maybe we're holding on to our sins of pride like Herod. Maybe we're simply showing up to Mass for our obligation, seeking the fastest Mass so that we can get back to Sunday fun day. Maybe we're too scared that we would lose influence on our work, of our work or social status for be, being a public witness to Christ. If this is true for any of us, I have a couple suggestions. One, make a good confession before you go to your next Mass. Two, if you haven't been going to adoration, find adoration at your local parish. And three, add in a simple prayer after receiving communion. Lord, change my heart to be like yours. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts to worship the Lord in the Holy Eucharist. Come, let us adore him, and let us depart by another way.
Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. As members of the one body of Christ, co-heirs to the promise of salvation, we pray for God's grace to fulfill our needs and the needs of all. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may reflect the light of Christ as we preach the gospel, minister to those in need, and exercise our Christian values, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the light of peace, may permeate, permeate over the world from the raising of the sun to its setting so that all may live free from the threat of hostility, violence, and war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those who search for a place to call home, especially refugees, immigrants, and those who are seeking asyl asylum, that they may find welcome and hope in their new homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are homeless and all who are unable to afford adequate housing, that they may be kept safe and warm during the times of brutal winter weather. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our diocesan community, that we may always welcome those who come here sincerely searching for God's presence and that our hospitality and kindness may help reveal that presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember in our prayers this morning the names. We will enter into our book of remembrance along with the souls of all our departed loved ones who have journeyed to be with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of light, much as the Magi at the time of your son's birth, we look toward the light of Christ to lead us on our journeys. Hear the prayers we make as we continue on our way home to you and grant them through your son, Jesus Christ, the light of our world.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Mira con bondad, Señor, los dones de tu iglesia, que no consisten ya en oro, incienso y mira, sino en lo que por esos dones se representa, se inmola y se recibe como alimento. Jesucristo, Señor nuestro, el que vive en por los siglos de los siglos. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift it up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity our pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Señor Jesucristo, que, que dijiste tus apóstoles, la paz de te con mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concederé la paz y la unidad. Tú que vives reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. La paz del Señor esté siempre con ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank the crew at at Chalice of Salvation and the Cathedral of St. Michael the Archangel for their uh, hospitality here. And uh, I want to also thank our wonderful choir. Let's give them a round of applause. Why not? And our three kings that made uh, this such a, a wonderful celebration of Three Kings Day. Let's thank them for being here. And continued blessings to all who are at home, uh, who are unable to be at Mass. Uh, we come to you to bring Jesus. Hopefully this Mass changes us and sends us out to be witnesses of Christ's light to the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and glorify in the presence of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Throughout history, there have been questions surrounding the Star of Bethlehem that led these visitors from the East to pay homage to the infant Jesus. Was that star in fact a comet, a bright light in the sky, a miracle, or a myth? Father Douglas McGonigal, pastor of Most Holy Redeemer Parish in Hadley, who is also an astronomer, attempts to solve the mystery in his latest book. Steve Hiltonic sat down with the priest astronomer and tells us more now about what did the Magi see? The Star of Bethlehem has captured the imagination of scholars, scientists, and astronomers for centuries. It's arguably one of the most famous stars in human history and also one of the biggest mysteries. According to the Gospel of Matthew, the star led the Magi, or wise men, to the infant Jesus, an event known as Epiphany. But what exactly was the star of Bethlehem? Father Douglas McGonigal, pastor of Most Holy Redeemer Parish in Hadley, unravels the mystery in his book, The Star of Bethlehem, What Did the Magi See? Father McGonigal, who was an astronomer before he became a priest, builds on the work of a fellow astronomer, Michael Molnar, a former professor at Rutgers University. Molnar presents a compelling argument in his 1999 book of what the Magi may have seen based on his research of an ancient coin. Father McGonigal, who grew up outside of Boston in the early 60s, was always interested in space and the heavens. So I kind of grew up in a time when space and rockets and electronics were just uh, in the air. And so I've just always been interested in astronomy, science, anything that moved or flew on its own. Father McGonigal eventually received a B.S. and Ph.D. in astronomy from UMass Amherst. While at the Newman Center, the priesthood crossed his mind, and after entering the seminary, he was ordained in 2000. Father McGonigal never had a particular interest in the Star of Bethlehem until reading Molnar's book. Molnar became intrigued after he purchased an ancient coin that was minted in the Roman province of Syria around the year 6 A.D. 
and on the coins was the image of a leaping ram looking back at a star. He came up with the idea, the notion that this could very well be commemorating the Star of Bethlehem that's talked about in Matthew's Gospel. Based on the factual evidence gathered by Molnar, Father McGonagall agreed the coins could be linked to the Star of Bethlehem. This is now a legacy of the Magi. It's a, it's a tangible, historical article. It's a fact. It's not just a story that, that was made up or added in to make the birth of Christ seem more important. While a curate at St. Cecilia's in Wilbraham, Father Doug created a PowerPoint presentation and began to give talks around the diocese on Molnar's book. A few years ago, Victoria Seed, an editor with the Catholic Truth Society, asked if he was interested in writing a book based on the talks. The project was stalled by the pandemic, and it wasn't until 2023 that Father Doug agreed to write the book, which integrates Molnar's scholarship with his own research on the importance of the star and the nativity story. Father Doug has been giving his Bethlehem Star talks for nearly 20 years. This one was held last month at Holy Trinity Church in Greenfield. He first debunks four possible explanations for the star, that it was an angel or supernatural event. What about rare, spectacular astronomical phenomena such as comets, whoosh, supernova, or planetary conjunctions? Beep, 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 beep. Perhaps Matthew simply added the star to make the birth of Christ seem more important. Father Doug suggests the evidence supports only one plausible explanation, that the star was an astrological event, a portent or sign of a regal or magnificent birth in Judea. Matthew's gospel is the only biblical reference to a star in the Magi. Who then are the Magi? They were Gentiles and they came from the East. They were astrologers, they were wise men, they would explain natural phenomenon, they were healers, and they could cast horoscopes. That was their, their trade. They were using uh, calculations to be, predict the positions of the planets. In the book, Father Dill explains the Magi's projected horoscope pertaining to the astrological and astronomical events that likely occurred. Everything all comes together, one thing on top of another that on April 17th, 6 BC, pointed towards a regal birth in Judea. Although astrology is anathema to Christians, Father McGonagall believes we need to view the event as historical fact to understand the motivation of the Magi. He offers his version of a potential conversation between the Magi after witnessing a stupendous astrological portent. Balthazar, look at this one. We got, you know, Saturn and Jupiter and the, and the sun are all in Aries and the moon occults Jupiter as it's having a heliacal rising in Aries. Wow, there's a new king being born in Judea. Astronomers going back to the fourth century AD have written about the same event, which falls within the same period historians believe Jesus was born. The sign of the zodiac that rules over Judea is Aries the ram. And so you would think that if you're going to have a birth of a king in Judea, then the regal portent should appear in the constellation Aries. The Gospel of Luke explains Jesus was born around the time Quirinius was governor of Syria. After Molnar discovered Quirinius minted the coins of a leaping ram looking back at a star, he wondered if the coins could be linked to the star. Provincial coinage was the primary means for Rome to push its propaganda on the population. When they put the leaping ram looking at a star on a low denomination coin, so that means everybody has them in their person, they're sending a message. The message is, yes, we are aware of a regal portent in this constellation Aries that was a regal birth. And you all think it was for the Messiah. Well, no, it was for Caesar. Fearing a Jewish revolt, the coins may have been an attempt by the Romans to subvert the Star of Bethlehem and twist its meaning to benefit the emperor. So what did the Magi actually see? If you got it in your head that it's a Spielbergian you know, encounters of the third kind sort of event that leads everybody to the mountaintop, <laughs> <you know? laughs> no. To them, big, bright, shiny things wasn't so much the big deal. It was the layering on of multiple things that really kind of caught their attention. Father Doug explains in detail about King Herod, Roman and Greek history, 
the coins, as well as the celestial configurations leading up to the star of Bethlehem, which most likely was the planet Jupiter being eclipsed by the moon. Since the book release, Father McGonagall's talks have been well received. At Holy Trinity, over 70 people attended his latest PowerPoint presentation, which replicates the format used in the book. Father Doug answered questions and attendees could purchase autographed copies of the book. Many left with a new perspective of the star. Father McGonagall concludes, we may never know with certainty if the coins are linked to the stars. However, if the majority of evidence and historical facts are true, the enemies of the Christ child quite unwittingly left behind for us tangible, physical, historical evidence that a star once shone over a little town in Judea the day the king of the universe was born. In Hadley, I'm Steve Kiltonic. Thanks, Steve. And if you'd like to purchase Father Doug's book, we have provided a link to Amazon at iobserve.org, or you can stop by his parish, Most Holy Redeemer in Hadley. And thank you to Father Ryan Rooney for celebrating this Mass for us. And a big thank you to Deacon Pedro Rivera Moran for helping to coordinate this Mass and assisting at the altar. We are also grateful to Gloria Diaz and the music ministers from St. Jerome and Holyoke for their music today, along with all the members from the Catholic Latino community who joined us for this special occasion. Coming up around the diocese, Knights of Columbus Council 9960 is hosting a pasta dinner this Wednesday, January 10th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. at St. Michael's Parish Center on Summers Road in East Long Meadow. The meal includes ziti, homemade meatballs, salad and roll, along with dessert and coffee or tea. You can also get it to go. The pasta dinner is $8 for adults, $7 for seniors, and $5 for kids 5 to 12. Children under five are free. All proceeds support the KFC Charity Fund. Again, that's this Wednesday from 5 to 6.30 p.m. at St. Michael's in East Long Meadow. St. Bridget's Parish in Amherst is holding a big band dinner and dance to benefit the parish. The Winter Wonderland theme Night of Dancing and Food kicks off at 6 p.m. on Friday, January 26th with a cocktail hour, followed by a 7 p.m. catered buffet dinner and dancing from 8 to 11 to a seven-piece orchestra and Frank Sinatra tribute artist Patrick Tobin. The semi-formal affair will be held at the Monsignor Lane Pastoral Center on North Prospect Street in Amherst. Tickets are $50 per person and can be reserved by contacting the parish at 413-256-6181 or stbridgetsamherst at gmail.com. We also have a link at our website, iobserve.org. Sounds like it will be a really fun evening. And I invite you to join us next week as we celebrate the 42 years of service that Brother Terence Scanlon gave to the Diocese of Springfield here on the Chalice of Salvation. All are invited to attend the Mass celebrated by Bishop William Byrne here at St. Michael's Cathedral this Thursday, January 11th at 5 p.m. For those of you not able to be with us in person for this special Mass, we will have it for you on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. That's on the Chalice of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us. May you be blessed with a happy and healthy week ahead.